Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Team Radio V Inside Metal Show. That, of course, is brand new Armored Sane. Well, I guess it's still pretty brand new, right? Win Hands Down, title track, amazing new album. Came out in June. Yeah. We got the Gon! Yeah! What's up? Gonzo Sandoval. He's even got the shirt, if you forget his name, uh, later in the program, which no one would forget because you are a legendary drummer. And I, Why, and I thank you. That. I'm just doing this because maybe I'm going to start selling them, you know. I'll buy one. I'll buy one. I'll be like the first person to buy one. Capitalize on that. And uh, this is a total traditional metal show. We got my man Jarvis from the band Night Demon. Hello. Just released uh, the uh, Night of the... um, Curse of the Damned. Curse of the Damned. I was going to say Night of the Demon. (laughs) Curse of the (laughs) Demon. Curse of the Damned on uh, Century Media Records. Yep. Cool. And a uh, great new band, a classic new wave of British heavy, heavy metal style band. And, of course, we got my lovely co-host, Ms. Jasmine Sinclair, Hi. in her King Diamond show. Yes, next month. Can't get more metal than that. It's going to be the best. I'm like, this This is like a big honor. I'm a huge Armored Saint fan. Right and this is a big deal for me. You don't understand. This is like that Wayne's World moment when they meet <laughs> Alice Cooper. And they feel like they're just not worthy. This is my moment. So I've got to say, I'm not worthy. Whoa, whoa. All right. <laughs> And I'm sure you'll be a big Night Demon fan after yes, this episode. Yes, I can't well. wait. And you're not even British, and you're doing like old style British heavy metal. Yeah, they stole it from us, and then yes. we stole it back. I'm gonna tell Rob. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell Rob Halford that. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool stuff. So uh, let's begin talking about um, you know Armored Saint. Of course, you've just got back on off the road. You were doing yeah. uh, some great dates with Saxon. I saw you. Here at the House of Blues, which is no longer one right. of the last shows. That's a sad occasion there. Yeah, you did at the House of Blues, and mm-hmm. uh, amazing, amazing tour. And then you did, obviously, uh, you did some festivals over the summer. Yeah, we, we've been um, really blessed um, to be able to tour in Europe and do uh, pretty much the biggest shows we've ever done. We played Hellfest, uh, Priest was there, and Motorhead, and Alice Cooper, Billy Idol, and Armored Saint, you know, on the same stage. 90,000 <laughs> people. It was just a sea of people. We really had a good time. Then we went on to do Germany and, and um, Valken. And, uh, Great festival. you know, we, we played uh, the Easy, uh, Free and Easy Festival in Munich. That was that was pretty cool, too. After that, um, you know, we came to the States and, and did some s- more dates with Saxon. We did some in May and then now some in sub- September. Right on. And you were out on the road. I know you're going back <laughs> with Holy Grail, right? Yeah, we've been at, we've done I think 180 shows this year. Yeah, you're yeah. like not you're like total old school, man. Yeah. Going out on the road. And I mean, it's it, that's the only way, you know, these days from from having a day job is to to make it so that you're gone <laughs> long enough that nobody will hire you, right? You know. I mean, <laughs> well, you Have make you a living hired? on the road, right? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And Curse of the Night, when did that actually come out? Curse of the Dam. Come on here, Bob. Why guys no. keep saying Curse actually, of the Night? I know that I know the name <laughs> yeah. of the album. Uh, but uh actually it, you know, it came out in January, right. but but you know the t- album touring cycle. You know, it's there about it a year and a half with with this stuff. So uh, so we're still touring. We just got back from Mexico. Uh, we did like cool. two weeks in Mexico, which is long for Mexico. You know, usually yeah. you go out for three or four shows, but sure. uh, uh, you know, but we did ten weeks in Europe. I mean, which is grueling, awesome. and then another yeah. seventy shows in the states. So cool. so it keeps keeps rolling. Yeah, but so we're we're doing a you know we we have a festival that we put on. Here in Southern California, Ventura, yeah, uh, called Frost and Fire, which is like a traditional heavy metal festival. There's only like three or four in the states. There's like 200 in Europe, you know. Right, right. So we're bringing it here to the West Coast. So we're stoked. Um, you know, a lot of old school cult bands, Manila Road, Ashbury, stuff like that. I think we got the flyer um, for the Frost and Fire, uh, Frost and Fire that sounds festival. Sounds cool. And it's obviously yeah. taken from the Surathungal. Absolutely. Uh, well, the cool thing, the cool band. thing is that you know the guys, the Surathungal guys, are going to come and do like a meet and greet, uh, right. autograph signing. You know, which, you know, those guys haven't been around since 92. You know, they just kind of they just went away. They're so mm-hmm. disenfranchised with the, with the music business that they just they just killed that whole thing. So 
being able i mean this is kind of a tribute to them because you know they're the only other metal band from ventura besides us you right. know and uh it's funny like back in there the 80s go. you know back in there it is yeah back in the day you know like everybody loves sir Thungle, you know in other countries and stuff but you know where we come from it was you know they used to call him serious uncool actually yeah. in ventura <laughs> one time i think the F, one time one year i think they got voted like worst band in town or something yeah. like that so it's interesting it was a love hate thing yeah the vocals yeah. you had to kind right. of get used to right but now i mean on the first metal mass now they're like the great well. white buffalo it's like they're yeah. just a band that everybody well, will know, always wanted to see but couldn't now or never time did they should get back together We're i mean baby really, steps here baby especially steps especially in europe i mean you, you look know, at bands like warlord saint sure, vitus sure. all these bands are bigger now sure than they ever were. I mean, that's the, you know, we're working on it. But this is the kind of the, the, the first thing, at least getting these guys back together in the same room. And, you know, the cool thing is 10% of the ticket sales for this festival have come from, have come locally. You know, we, most of the people are coming from other countries and, and other wow. states because they want to come and meet these guys and they want to see all these bands sure. under the same roof in a small venue. So. Manila Road, they haven't played in quite some time. Yeah, that, yeah at least on the West Coast. You they're know, from Kansas, they, right? Yeah, they get out to like, you know, they're, they're like, they're very popular in places like Greece and stuff. You know, right. they go hang out at the Acropolis <laughs> and people go take photos with them. Sure. They're like that that epic metal. You they're know? Like, they're like Man of yeah. War. Yeah. Like, bands like being right. big in Japan or like love them. Yeah. Right, absolutely. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. I noticed a lot of bands for the past few years have just been touring, touring, touring consistently. The music business has taken such a that's the way a you change, make change. That's and it's the way crazy. you make something happen. Do for you even have though. a job? That just the band. Yeah. Just the band. Yeah. So, are you the one that's promoting this Frost and Fire Festival? Yeah. That's, that's, that's going to be cool. I mean, we've done I can't so wait to many see this. of these festivals yeah. that it's like we know what to to do and what not to do now. And right. it's like, it's not, it, there's nothing better than the actual bands that do this to mm -hmm. put the stuff on. Well, you, you know? look at most of the European festivals and Jasmine, yeah. I were talking this on, uh, on a previous they're episode. They're the best. And, and they're all fans. Yeah. And a lot of them were previous, you know, musicians and right. other bands and, and they worked, I Absolutely. mean, they were or worked at fanzines. Most of the people I, I knew, they, they all knew who I was from the fanzine days, from the tape yeah, training. Well, you're old school. Around. <laughs> yeah, you're very the old school. <laughs> but they you live know? and breathe metal. They're not yeah. like, I think the problem here is the American promoters, the people that do all these, you know, I won't mention the festivals, but yeah, you know, these, sure. tra I'll these do festivals it. are traveling. I'll do it. You know, they're, they're business guys. They have they have no clue right. about metal. They don't. I have think a you're talking about Mayhem bands. Fest, that whole oh, nightmare. Oh, exactly. That's, like that was a complete yeah. shit show times yeah. ten. I've been to so many festivals in Europe. Like what most people don't know is the band Enslaved. And right. I hope you guys know who Enslaved is. They shouldn't even be watching the show or talking to any of us. <laughs> um, one of the guys in the band was one of the original promoters for Inferno Festival. Mm -hmm. And last uh, this past April was their anniversary, the 20th or 15th anniversary. And it's just when you have these people involved, it makes it so much more better. Bloodstock Festival in England is very mm -hmm. family oriented and they make the guests and even the press people like we feel welcome. Yeah, 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 Adam and Vicky are some of the nicest people you can ever meet. And then here it's just they don't even have your passes at the front. They don't have all yeah. the stuff put together. And it's like I don't think the heart's behind it either. Sometimes. Exactly. And like no, no discredit to Kevin Lyman. I mean, the Warp Tour has been hugely successful yes. and he's involved with the times for that. He's just not a metal guy. No. So when your heart's not in it and you don't and you don't i mean no offense to these bands either but when when you're doing a huge huge venues like 35 40 thousand seat venues and your third strongest band is hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's just not it's just doesn't they have make the sense same you know? rotating bands too they don't yeah. take any risks they don't have any yeah. of the older school but they're bands blaming they it on the, the genre you understand and King that's Diamond and, and, and if they're not gonna and what it genre themselves. has the most loyal fans in the world Metal. It's yeah, yeah. yeah so well, but like metal early, fans are the best. Like early early on, um, you know, Armored Saint wanted to get to Europe in the 80s when, when it was hot. And uh, for whatever reason, it, it just didn't happen. But now we're able to go back uh, more than, than before. And what I've always found is that uh, going to Europe is just like metals never left. It's yeah. actually mm. grown. Absolutely. It's there's no lull. There's no up and down. It's just they love their heavy metal. Mm. So Armored Saint goes down there, and people have been waiting for years and years, and you know they're pretty rabid for it. So yeah. we're really uh, and I think it's awesome. Also, I will say that American American fans of Armored Saint will go to Europe to yes. see them there. Absolutely. You know, because they want to be a part of that whole thing. You yeah, know? Yeah. they want to see their favorite band. With the with the right people, audience, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. It's amazing. Why? Why? Because we we talked about this, and and I've uh, talked with Bush about it too, and he said that was a main thing that uh, 
really kind of cursed Armored Saint because all these bands in the early 80s, because metal was not big when Armored Saint first signed with Crystal. It just yeah. started to explode in L.A. Mm -hmm. It didn't really get the ball rolling. But in Europe, you know, you had Metallica going over. All the American bands, whether it be Man of War or Twisted Sister or even yeah. bands here, uh, you know, Motley were, the, were exposing Kerrang! way before they were exposing any national magazine yeah. here in the States. All those bands... Uh, and especially the heavier bands, you know, Testament, all those bands, Anthrax, yep. they were all going to Europe. And yep, uh, yep, yep. why was was there was it just label and management <sighs> that kind of kept yeah, it? I, I mean, you know, at this point, you don't really want to throw blame <laughs> on anyone. But, <laughs> yeah, it definitely was a management and label situation because we were screaming. Mm. We when we were forming, we're like we're like tailor made for a European audience. Yep. We're a European style band in Los Angeles. We're, we're going against the grain with everything that's going on in the, in, in the, in LA. And, and, uh, you know, we're like, let's get to Europe, let's sure. get to Europe. And like, we saw all these bands going and, you know, we're like, uh, Hmm, what's yeah. going on. And, and, you know, the excuse of, Oh, it's really expensive <laughs> over yeah. there. And all this <laughs> came into play. We were on Chris list. You know, we had the best management in the world, and, and that didn't even help. Yeah. So uh, I don't really was know. was on the cover of Kerrang! You guys Cr were all on yeah. the but cover. But even like the like underground scenes like Shock Power Rising and stuff were writing about Armored Saint right yeah. from Everyone the beginning. Was. Right from the beginning. By the Demo. time we got to Armored Saint, like 10 years later, <laughs> you know, it was a bit late. But right. all the people in the clubs were like, man, we used to hear Armored Saint in the clubs every single right. day. We were waiting for Armored Saint, you know, and it just didn't happen. And so, you know, that's the past. You're making yeah. up for lost and, time. And I yeah. think the the coolest thing of what you guys did was you guys went and played, you know, the Keep It True Festival in Germany, which yep. is like, you know, kind of the what the same as what Frost and Fire is. It's like the actual truest, tr most traditional heavy metal fans. They go to this thing. And like for when you guys came back out and did that, I mean, I thought that was a really good thing because, you know, the Valkans are great. I mean, that's where you're really exposed. But. It's yeah. a, those are beer drinking festivals, you know, like there's only only your your heart, you know, certain amount of people are going to watch the bands and stuff like that, you know. So for you guys to do something like that, I think was was like super. We cool. headlined that. Uh, keep it true. And it was amazing. A lot of people were great at such a small little town. It was a great place yeah, to take pictures. Nowhere, yeah. <laughs> the, the church's bells were ringing. I was walking around going, wow, am I in the movie or something? Because <laughs> yeah. the, the props are all here, you know, <laughs> but it's real life there. And uh, very country. And it, it was awesome. All right. Well, sounds like we're going into a break. Yes. A little bit of Night Demon. Oh, yeah. Cool. Does he go into the break? <laughs> like, From the uh, first EP, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, it's Right on. So we're going to talk uh, more Armored Saint, more Night Demon, and more Jasmine St. Clair. Or more take your phone calls. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be taking phone, phone calls when yes. we're on that. I want to so, bite uh, your head off. There you go. Yes. <laughs> and she will, believe me. All right, we'll be back in two minutes. such a great metal scene in LA in the early 80s. It really was an amazing time to be here. You go up to Sunset Boulevard and it was just packed. It was like Mardi Gras, heavy metal Mardi Gras. Our dressing room at the Roxy after we played, I'm looking around and there's Vince Neil passed out in the corner in a pile of his own cube. Yep, we're in Hollywood. <laughs> we ain't in Alaska anymore. <laughs> the epicenter of metal is now happening in, in Los Angeles. The UK press was particularly excited by what was going on in the LA and California, and in America in general by the early 80s, because new wave of British heavy metal had pretty much ran out of steam. At that time, there was so much good metal. You know, it was so good because it was so genuine. I mean, you could feel it. It was electric. The air was filled with something that was going to happen. At first, they were friendly and hanging out and fun, all fun and games. Then it became competition. The LA scene was so crowded with musicians, and everybody was getting to know each other. They all started sounding similar to each other because they were hanging out at each other's rehearsal sessions. 
things kind of got polarized and you know they're like you're either part of this group or you're part of that group. Everybody had their own take on on this new form of music. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no way if that guy is the new guitar hero that any any of us can keep up. Keep fighting. It's just like getting a deal was just the beginning. By the the time of the early 80s, it was very very hard to get shows if you were a heavy metal band or hard rock band. We did some shows over that summer, opening for Armored Saint, uh, and, and we felt that if we could kind of ride their coattails, maybe there would be hope. We were in the dressing room next to them, and that's the, we heard them discussing their whole thing about they thought they were too heavy for LA, and they need to move to San Francisco. You know, we definitely had a, a bit of a, of, a, of a kind of an identity <laughs> issue at the time. We're just not belonging anywhere. You know, we were just outcasts. I mean, we're all on the verge of being homeless. The music is the music of the wild and the young. Am I on? Am I on? There we go. <laughs> so Queen's World. I dig this track, man. Yeah. I dig the end. That's our new video. Yes. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yes. Oh, really? We yeah. got to say, you know, we're going to play the, the uh, old video for our, I guess, old now, when hands down, the first video. <laughs> first video. For the title track. And uh, uh, we're going to, what did you start right there, of course, was the uh, trailer for the uh, Inside Metal, the uh, LA Metal Scene Explodes, which I was just talking to Jarvis about, will be. Uh, screened hopefully next month and will be out. This is number two, DVD. right? Yes, this okay. is number two. Uh, it's a little confusing because the first movie was a two DVD set, and I gotta tell you, though, we got both D both volume one and volume two on Amazon Prime now. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you could stream it, and we also have part one now on iTunes. So uh, nice. check out. Uh, nice. Yes. You know, the Inside Metal Pioneers of L.A. Two. Hard Rock. Yeah. I want to see part two. Well, part, well, the the guys... second movie, you guys saw part two. That was the oh, volume really? one and volume two of that. Oh, well, the new movie. Okay, so this is three then? No, this is, two, this is no. two. This is two. This is the second movie. Well, I remember confusing. at that premiere, we went, to the, we went to the premiere at the theater. And, and it was and, like and, three and, hours. Well, yeah, right? it was like, yeah. it was like it, it, after the first 90 minutes, I was like, oh, great yeah. job, Bob. And he was like, okay, we're going to take a break. And uh, the second half is going to start in 15. That's part two. That's part two. The second half. Okay. So right. we did see it all. Yes, you okay. did see it all. Okay. Okay. Now, the cool. second movie, L.A. Metal Scene Explodes, which will have a ton of Armored Saint in it. Nice. That's yeah. going to be from 1982 to Got 1986. Okay. And that will also be two DVDs. Because we, oh. we made this long movie. Right. And, you know, Warren, our executive editor, is like, dude, just make it in two volumes. Because it's like, you got to cut it down. It should be 110 minutes. It shouldn't be any more longer than that. Or, you know, we get on Netflix and cable and all that. So I'm like, dude, I don't know how to just cut it down not, that. Yeah. He goes, well, dude, just make it two volumes. I'm like, cool. So nice. that's what we did. So, so we, we didn't, didn't want to see the second movie. Yes. The second see, movie. Yeah. That's second that's movie. The, the second three-hour <laughs> movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Bob, isn't it your birthday today? Oh, oh it is. Happy birthday, birthday, Bob. Yes. Gonza's birthday tomorrow. Yay. Monday. 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 The 12th. The 12th. Whatever okay. day that is. I knew it was coming up. Yeah. Real soon. Yes. So, uh, what day is it? Today? Libras. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You Libra. guys are Libras. That's right. Uh, that's right. Balance. That's why we get along so well, right? Yeah. I'm a Scorpio. I'm not a Libra, baby. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. Ouch. Well, that's a good mix, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it, Jake? I don't know. I don't Jake's know. just like whatever it is. Yeah. What it is. So how how about we play the uh, Wind Hounds Down video? A little, uh, little the video. Of that. Yeah, I think oh, for uh, sure. I think Jake's got that. Uh, the Crank that there. up. And then we're going to have Neely join us uh, on the second half from the uh, classic And what about metal the calls? Show. Let's oh, have oh, some oh. people call Holy in. Holy cow. Oh, Look man. at that, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Neely. Can you hear us, Neely? Rockin'. There he is from nice. the classic metal show. We got Excellent. the Gons. What's up, nice. From Armored Saint, we got Jarvis from Night Demon. I know you're a big Night Hello. Demon fan as well. well I know uh, I know our good friend uh, Jackal One is a big Night Demon fan. Is, isn't he not going to set some record to play like three days? Oh, are you Night talking Demon? about uh, Jim? Yeah, Nostradamus. Jim Bartek. Yeah, he's yes. on right now. He's on uh, our... Well, he's on, I think, 253 in a row. He listens to the record <laughs> once a day all the way through consecutively. He, he has a record for a, he has a Judas Priest record. Yeah. I think it's the like Nostrad 450 Nostrad days. Yeah. He <laughs> listened to that double record every day, yeah. and it was crazy. He's nuts. Yeah. He's crazy. So, but listening yeah, to yours, that, that makes awesome, sense. Though. He's yeah. awesome. We're all nuts. Curse of the Demons. 
Curse of the Dam. Go, just, I know. It's alright. I'm just gonna hold it up. I, I, for you. I was fucking with you. Okay. I was a demon, demon, night demon. I say demons, night yes. demon, night of the demon. Uh, curse curse of, the demon. of the Dam. So let's play the Armored Saint uh, video for "When the Hands Down." Yeah. We'll do about uh, thirty seconds. Or so. The title track to the latest Armored Saint yes. album. We can't promote that enough, man. You know, wow. we've had John and on And we could have watched the whole thing. Yeah, oh, but yeah. You know, then we won't be able to <laughs> talk <laughs> about all your other yeah. projects. That's true. That's we've got true. so okay. many stuff right. to talk oh, about. Wow. Right. So, Neely, are you there? Are you still there? I don't see. Oh, there he is. So, uh, I know Neely, a uh, classic metal show, of course. Uh, Chris Aiken couldn't make it, but uh, Neely's a big supporter of Armored That's Saint. Cool. And I want to introduce Appreciate you guys. That. I don't know if you've actually... Uh, uh, you, you should be proud of yourself of... Uh, you know that armored saint release uh, we do a uh, top 10 cd countdown every year mm -hmm. and uh unless something comes out that is kicking me in the face that's going to be my number one pick i'm wow, letting that awesome, out early with, i know we're only in october but that'll be my number one album of uh, 2015. thank you so much Mine it was uh, it was amazing making that record uh john and joey wrote some amazing songs and uh you know the process was uh was challenging because um, I really think that it's probably one of our most progressive rock records and uh, we finally got the energy of the Armored Saint on uh, on disc on uh, the recording so I feel really good about my drum performances those were a challenge and uh, the songs are great jo John is sounding amazing uh, the band is sounding the best in 30 years of all time so for me to say that it it, it, it says something and um, that's how we feel, and then we're getting the energy and the re reaction from the f uh, fans that are coming and see us, and they're feeling it. So, you know, there's a whole new uh, new generation and wave of heavy metal, and you know, we would just want to ride on top of that and and play out as much as we can, promote win hands down. Absolutely, yeah, and will. shout out to Jay Rustin for the mixing that record too. He uh, did a great sure. he did a yeah, great job sure. with that. He, he really he, did. The whole the whole uh, <laughs> production team. Um, Josh Newell, uh, Joey Vera, and, and Jay Rustin did an amazing Jay's job. Jay's become like the metal guy now. He's like the Michael, it's like so what Michael so Wagner weird was in the 80s. I he's think it, was, it was all started the with the Steel Panther thing, too. Yeah. You know? He's great. Oh, that's yeah. right, right. Yeah. 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 Burbank area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steel yeah I remember um, he mic'd up my drum set, and uh, and we got the sounds, and then uh, and he, I go, man, it sounds really, really good. And then he looked at me, and he goes, now it's all about the performance. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you're right. I better do some and ass You perform <laughs> pretty damn well. Yeah. On Thank that you album, so much. I, I really that. appreciate it that. It's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit. I know you've been real busy. We were just talking about you were playing with the Dio Disciples out in Mexico. You filled in. I know yeah. Vinny yeah. uh, Apice and uh, uh, Simon Wright were both playing, but they weren't able to play. And right. how, how was that experience playing with? Oh, uh, let me tell you, it was it was a uh, it was challenging for sure. It was a lot of fun and it was eye opening and so many different levels um it was not an easy gig and you know i, I did my best and um you know it, it it's something that i'm really uh proud that i did um and uh we did three shows and uh, uh the way it was presented to me was like yeah we're gonna do three shows you know uh, uh it'll be fine you know i'm like okay you know let's do this um when i got there it was actually a whole lot more there were really big shows and it was a it was a real deal 
um, as far as a concert atmosphere and and you know so I sweat it through a lot of things and uh, and I'm glad I did it and and you know I'm honored to be asked they did call me again in July uh, to do one more uh, but we were playing Las Vegas with Armored Saint so I couldn't do it but um, you know they call me back Saint? so that's that means something to me. As I said, that was the first time you actually performed in uh, Mexico, because Armored Saint's never been there. Armored right? Saint has never been there. We we were supposed to go. Uh, you know, something fell Which through with the promoter. We'll take you guys. Mexican. And you're laughing. And then, so. Yeah, and so <laughs> I, I go there and uh, we'll take you guys. And play with Dio. You know, <laughs> yeah, Dio why don't you guys tour together? We will. Yeah, we will. <laughs> How do you keep your stamina we need with some all Mexicans the drums and all this? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Yeah, how do you keep your stamina? Seriously. You know, for me, me personally I got to start prepping like a month ahead of time uh, and and if I'm learning songs and I need like two or three months uh, because in order for me to play like it's second nature for like an hour or, or whatever it is and make it look like it's easy <laughs> it's not so physically I have to sort of cross some thresholds where where I lose myself and let my body do it but physically I have to be uh, you know up to par uh, to handle it. Now really. let me ask you this, if you weren't playing drums for Armored Saint, <laughs> then don't give me the answer that you'd be in jail or something, what would you be doing? <laughs> If I wasn't playing yes. drums, uh, okay, I'd I, I probably a mathematician. Yes. I'd probably be a mathematician really? living sure. in India oh, or know. or a photographer shooting rock bands all over the world. Cool. Speaking I of like which, that. I love your photography. That's a good one. I Thank you so much. On Facebook. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I feel so blessed about is that, you know, I get to play concerts with my, my buddies and my brother and, uh, you know, and with Armored Saint and, and just rock out. And then after that, I just dry up and I get my camera and I get to go shoot like, you know, Michael Schenker in Belgium, <laughs> yeah. you know, or Killer. Queensryche in England. And yeah. You know, so so I, I feel really, really blessed about that. And, and um, the more I do it, the the, the better I get. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to posting some of the most amazing shots uh, that I took in uh, the summer this year uh, of Michael Schenker, Queensryche, Saxon. Killer, and um, it's just a, it's just the way it happened. You know, I mean, I who would have planned? Hey, you, you play drums and you shoot pictures and you do rock and roll and. It's all just the creative uh, environment that I'm in, and that's where I live. I love playing music. I love writing. Um, you know, I have other projects that I do, and um, as long as I'm doing something creative, I feel like my life is, is thriving, and, and right. I'm, I'm doing what I'm meant to do. But we're going to get to all those other that. projects. Yes. We're going to talk a little bit about right. Black Raven. Uh, Neely, stay on. We're going to uh, continue on with the great Neely from the Classic Metal Show, and we're going to talk to Jarvis. Yes. About the uh, new deal that Century Media has yeah. with Sony, nice. we got to talk a little bit and about that. And I have that. something no, to promote too. So. And we, oh, yeah, we have, <laughs> have, have another thing: yes. the mixtape. Mix oh yes, okay. we got to talk about that. And we'll be back, of course, with Jasmine St. Clair. See, okay. this goes fast, doesn't it? Isn't yeah. this fun though? We need fast. more time, I think. Hell yeah. Two hours. Yeah. Yes, two hours. Maybe next time. With alcohol. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we could provide that for the next round. <laughs> so thrash that is so over the top the most extreme music i've ever heard we were all hanging out together we were all united around the belief in this music and and it brought us together San Francisco gets talked about all the time, but LA had a fierce metal scene. But man, we had to fight the good fight against of most of what LA stood for. LA did not get the credit. It was stolen from San Francisco. They, they took all the credit. All these bands started emerging who were following in the footsteps of the new wave of British heavy metal. And it, it was just blood. <laughs> it was just brutal blood, man. Just fights and just, there was no control. There was no control. The danger was part of the excitement. Kidnap the poser and set him on fire and tie him to a chair and beat him up. I watched them do stuff like that. I 
got the biggest band in San Francisco opening for you. We're like, why in tea? He's like, no, Metallica. We're like, who? Good grief, you know, Metallica's much bigger than Diamond had ever were. So we got a copy of No Life to Lever, put it on, it was like, Metallica was the first time I heard the punk element plus the new wave of British heavy metal put together. I'm like, this is it. I loved it. Said, well, we're going to headline LA. That's our hometown. But we're going to headline. And Metallica going before us. Well, that was a big mistake. Because then they came on and just destroyed us. We went on right before Metallica. And there's still like that thread. There's no way we're going to blow away Metallica or anything. But I mean, we're going to fucking try. Open for Queensland. People they had no idea who we were. Oh, yeah. This is a big arena, and I remember looking at an audience and people having this look of terror. And, and the whole place was, the ceiling was sweating. Damn, yeah, that's Lockstar shit. Get yeah, that fucking roadies, you know? You got all the metal guys on one side of the parking lot, and you got all the punkers on the other side, and the animosity's already started. It was just crazy. It was youth. You know, it was youth. You that song? Oh, yeah. This song there is on go. our mixtape. Ah, uh, yes. Well, we're going to get right into that, man. we got to get the intro going. Some new Armored Saint. Yeah. All right. Inside Metal T Radio V with my good friend, uh, Mr. Gonzo Sandoval from so. Armored Saint Jarvis Weatherby from... Night Demon, and of course Jasmine St. Clair, and joining us on Skype, you still there, Mr. Neely, from the Classic Metal Show. Oh, he's there. There he is. Can you speak up a bit? I think. I th Bonzo. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I want to ask Bonzo a question. Sure. Uh, you guys, as Armored Saint, uh, you know, Armored Saint is a very powerful band. You guys, uh, last two CDs, your La Raza, and of course this... Uh, this win hands down very very strong releases i know you guys are very independent in writing your music and producing and whatnot you're not uh, a slave to a record label and whatnot and i know that uh, it's you guys do this as a passion and work on this at your own pace which is great which is why you know i've been doing the classic metal show for 20 years and we've been doing this uh, without commercial sponsorship because it's just a passion and we enjoy it and we don't want to taint it now, uh, with you guys just finished up a little bit of a, a run uh, just recently. Yep. Now, and, and without getting into specific numbers, was this a profitable venture for you? Did you break even or did you come home broke? <laughs> That's a good well, question, man. though. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a tough. great question. I mean, coming home broke is never really an option. <laughs> uh, I don't think that should happen to any musician, you know. Um, but, you know, we did well. Uh, I want to thank all the fans who, who came out and supported us. Uh, you know, it, it, we played to a lot of large audiences, and uh, we were blessed to, to fill the clubs that we've been playing. It, it feels like a whole new wave of, of heavy metal and, and a whole new generation of young kids wanting to sort of, uh, you know, feel that vibe that was around in the 80s, I think. And... Their parents were there. They loved it. And now, you know, they've got kids. So they're bringing them around. And that's why I say that new generation of heavy metal is a new wave. And we want to ride it. Yes, absolutely. You should. And Saxon's such a great package. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. They're great. And you, awesome. I remember seeing you back in uh, the, uh, what was it, the Crusader tour? Or 83? Yep. I, I think it was like 87. Yeah, was that Crusader was yeah, after Okay, that. it wasn't that early. Yeah, yeah 87. Yeah. That was 83, we're Boy. still trying to get a record deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We got, some, you know, we got oh some pictures, God. and that'll explain all that. I'm bad with dates. So Why don't we throw up some of the photos, and we can kind of go on from there. The Armenian. Neely. I want your comments. The Mad Armenian. That's Great right. question. Uh, uh, here we go. That's uh, wow. that's the armor saying I remember. Uh -huh. Just signed by Chrysalis. Yep. All, you guys were all 19 Who's years that, old. Right with da the, the David feather. Pritchard. That's the man, Dave Pritchard. Wow. He, he passed yeah. away. And he was yes. 26 of leukemia. We miss him every day, and and I feel his spirit uh, a lot when we're playing live now. Um, we did dedicate uh, one show to his presence and to his aura and that's all awesome. he did. Uh, 
and he's still with us in our heart. Well, you sure. know, you just answered a fan's question, uh, James Christensen, who is the oh, Slayer James, Swine. Yes. Oh, he God. actually had that question of when you play, do you have the see, you know, feel the spirit of Dave Pritchard still today? Yeah. I mean, Dave was just an, a unique individual. He was a, a crazy maniac, sort of like me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, not really. But um, we were all back in the day. Yeah. But uh, he was just creatively uh, uh, blessed. He, uh, he played piano. He drew. He played guitar. He made his own guitars. He was just he was an a, amazing, a, guy. an amazing guy and just full of creativity and such you know, a great sense of yeah. humor. Too. Yeah, it was sen the sense of humor was amazing. <laughs> he was a uh, red hair, you know, born with red that. hair all through, you know, and um, we miss him a lot. And uh, he was such a huge part of Armored Saint. Um, and so we, we, we had to recover from the blow and it took a couple years. Um, and that's when uh, we, we did decide that we had written like 24 songs during his um, battle with leukemia. And, um, you know, when he passed, it was just like, what are we going to do? You know, we could just end it here. But it just didn't feel right to put in all that work. And, and I know that, um, you know, he wrote from the heart uh, throughout that whole process. And so thank God, you know, we, uh, we gathered the, the troops and, and made Symbol of Salvation. One of the funnest records uh, we ever recorded with, uh, with uh, Dave Jordan producing and uh, Brian Karlstrom, also rest in peace. Yeah. Um, as the engineer, and he's a, also a true brother of mine, a, a good friend that also passed away a couple of years ago. And um, you know, life yeah. is life. He also did the uh, La Raza record, right? He he yeah. definitely uh, um, he engineered um, and uh, co-produced uh, co it with yeah. Joey La Raza, and then great uh, guy too. Yeah, he I had mean, some good times at the old El, El Dorado studio oh right yeah. across from the Cat and Fiddle. That's and right. Marvin Gaye's old party. studio. Yeah, yeah, and that's gone, time. too, the Cat and Fiddle. That's, yeah. I remember and the seeing, studio. Yeah, I remember <laughs> seeing that photo all the time when I was a child. And I was obviously yeah. underage. I couldn't that was a great sneak place. out to your shows. Mm. But I remember seeing Dan and thinking how handsome he was and just how great that photo was. So I didn't get to see the band during those days, unfortunately. We got yeah. some more happen. photos there, Jake, we could throw up there. There's an old that school like photo fun. with Whoa. Gina Zamparelli. Holy oh, Yeah, we, that's we really some, old. We dug some up from the deep. That yeah, was probably 83, 80. Yeah. That was when huh. uh, you headlined Perkins, I believe, or maybe during the Wasp Rat Armored Saint. Here's one of the first uh, shows, I wow. think, at the old uh, Odd Fellows Hall in Pasadena. Smile, who are in the uh, first uh, Inside Metal yep. uh, Pioneers. They were... Uh, Big band, more of a, a, a just a hard rock. Odd hard fellows, rock rock. yeah, that's oh, crazy. Oh, with Wasp, that's that awesome. was a good. It's funny how you're listed above Rat on that. I <laughs> love that. That was a yeah, great me too. show. I you like actually that. opened, yeah. and then Rat, and then Wasp, and that uh -huh. was a huge show at Perkins. Where was Perkins and exactly? It Pasadena. Was in Pasadena. That was in Pasadena. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. There's an armored saint. Oh, we, oh, uh, we go. Oh, uh, we if go. you want to go back, Neely, uh, feel, feel free to make comment. Yeah. You remember that show? Did that show? That was at the Roxy. Metallica. Armistice, Savage, Grace, and Metallica. Did that happen? <laughs> um, at the Roxy? And look at all the other shows. Girl yeah. School, right above. This is, the, look at that. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that one never I'm, happened. I, I don't think yeah. it I don't happened. think Metallica I don't, did it. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember that. There's a, There's a classic that's one. That's an that was, awesome photo. That was on the road, I think, somewhere I think in, in Texas. Texas. Yeah. Yeah, and Cliff was still alive. He's yeah. an amazing individual. Another one of those amazing musician Gone musicians. Young, yeah. And uh, he played classical guitar. Uh, he played mine on the road. I brought mine, and, and uh, we got stuck in New York one time, snowed in, and all we could do is play Risk, play guitar, and, and, <laughs> uh, and drink and eat. All right. <laughs> There's another classic <laughs> Bill Hale photo with, of course, Dave Pritchard. Yep. With beautiful. Joey and uh, James Hetfield. Yep. All right. Those what are the days. Let me ask you something. Gongs. Like, what are sure. your thoughts on people making a fashion statement out of metal? Like, you have all these celebrities wearing, like, Metallica, Megadeth t-shirts that know nothing about metal. Like, what are just your thoughts on that in general? Even all these hipsters uh, and stuff. Well, I mean, I think that there's a core uh, b base of people who really know the music. And then there's uh, other people who, who like the music and maybe look at it from the outside and maybe like the designs or... You know, I don't know. And it then there's these people that we call fucking posers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always poser. around, yeah. they'll always a, be that's around. Correct. That's correct. We got a caller. You, go. yes. you guys want to call her? Neely, are you ready for a caller? Let's have Neely ready. handle this call. Let's go. All right. The <laughs> caller, you're on the line with Neely <laughs> from the Classic Metal Show. <laughs> hey there. Hey there. 
Hey, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was on hold, and I'm now I'm walking to pick up my daughter from volleyball practice. How's it going? <laughs> we're, we're, we're all awesome. good. How you? You're doing? live. Who are we speaking to? <laughs> this is Lyle. I live in Brea. Hey, Lyle. Hi, do you Lyle. have a question for Neely from the Classic Metal Show? <laughs> Uh, I, or three. Well, do you have see, a question uh, for anyone? For any of us, two. For, for Gonzo. You what got you for... to become a wait, Neely? What what got you to become a headbanger? Uh, <laughs> I was working in a record store in uh, while I was going to college back in 1983, and uh, that's when the the wave of LA metal started uh, creeping out. Be it uh, Dokken, Quiet Riot, Def Leppard. Uh, Queen's Reich. I was exposed to a lot of those releases, and uh, that's when I, you know, it caught fire. I mean, I listened to the stuff in the '70s, like Zeppelin and Deep Purple, but uh, it just seemed to be taken up a little uh, another notch in the '80s, and uh, you know, it was very attractive to me. And I soon relocated to uh, L.A. Uh, in '85, so uh, you know, it was something that I wanted to promote, and uh, here it is, 20, 25 years later, I'm still doing it. But I'm the, uh, I got, I'm not, I wasn't in college in 83, I was in junior high, but that's about the time I got into it. Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind was the first album I ever bought. Crocus, One Bites at a Time was the first album that was ever given to me, or that I owned, and I'll, I'll always cherish both of them, obviously. And I've uh, been a headbanger ever since. I like you know, all the bands you named, I like just as much as anyone. And uh, I can sit and listen to Dawkins and sit there and listen to Cinderella, but then turn around and listen to Slayer, Pantera, Cole Chamber. And then I could turn around oh. and listen to Jim Croce. So it's uh, just the way it is. Oh, but, very um, Let's talk girls volleyball. What were you saying about <laughs> that? What about <laughs> Dude, his daughter's probably really Lost young. Me at That's Cold illegal. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any other questions there, no, Kyle? I came to the junior high. I came to pick her up, and then she calls me. She's like, oh, did I tell you I have volleyball practice? I'm like, no, you failed miserably on that part. Well, you, you know, like, uh, Neely's, Neely's into junior high girls. Oh Isn't that God. right, Neely? <laughs> Are we going to bring I this up? I was bad. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Kyle. I appreciate it. Did you have anything else you hey, want to add? Or? I, I, yeah, I want to talk to Gonzo about something. What's uh, up? <laughs> hey, what's up there, brother? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm always doing great. It's always great talking to you. I got, you know, I want to got a question for you that I always forget to ask. Go for it. Um, when you, I know John Bonham is your, was your musical hero growing up and your main influence on the drums and everything, but what was the song or the album that got you to say to yourself, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I know I can do it. You mean from Led Zeppelin and John Bonham, or or or, or whoever? I mean, it could be it could be that. I, I would I would figure it would be from Zeppelin. But what yeah. was there another album? What was the well, what was your breakthrough album that made you that made you chase your dreams? Wow, that's a good question. Um, well, back in the in early days, you know, we were into Kiss and Queen and um, UFO, ACDC. Um, so I, I actually think that um, between uh, Phil Rudd and John Bonham, I, I, somewhere in there, I like to push and pump the, the beat and, um, you know, just keep being steady was always my goal. Um, and and uh, so as far as a record, uh, man, there's so many. Highway to Hell, there's, uh, um, um, shoot, uh, the Led Yo, Zeppelin Frank, records, Led Zeppelin 3, Since I've Been Loving You. Is one of the most key songs for me, I think. So maybe that one. Right on. Okay, well, great. That's awesome. Let's, you know what? Since I've been loving you, it will always go down. It's one of the biggest classics in rock rock music history. Oh yeah, it's a great oh, that's record. A, that's and, a good song to pick. The recording is awesome. You can even hear some squeaks on the bass drum if you listen carefully. <laughs> so there's a lot of fun going on there. <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling, Kyle. Lyle, 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 with Lyle. Oh, Lyle, Lyle, Lyle with an L. Okay. Yeah. Fun Kyle's <laughs> next. All right, just like his yeah. album, Night of the Demon. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I think we got a photo. You, you're doing some really interesting, Jarvis. You got a mixtape, total old yeah. school. Reminds me of the uh, uh, old Neat Records. What was it totally. called? Lead to Lead or uh, what was what? the um, Neat Records? Neat called? Records did a, a cassette only compilation back in the wow, 80s. I it was like how a, do I not know that? Uh, oh, well, uh, okay. You, you just don't know your metal. Yeah, dude. I know my Neat it, Records. It was, it was a, oh, 60 Minutes. Uh, it was called, I can't remember what it's called, but I remember they did that back in the day. I think uh, 
We got the mixtape photo there. Okay, we go. yeah. Oh, so cool. we're good friends, so, Hyrax are on so it. So Night Demon started a label. We started our own label basically to get to release our back catalog stuff that we have the rights to now. Okay, so it's like, and, and you know, we're a fairly new band, but our first EP came out on like four different labels. It was just a licensing thing, so we have that back now. So awesome. we're putting that in production. So with that. I mean, that was the only goal to start a label. It wasn't to put out bands or anything, but we wanted to do some interesting projects. So this is what we have now, which we've been working on, heavy metal mixtape. So basically, it's like, it's, it's, it's a cassette, okay? <laughs> uh, believe it or not, cassettes are definitely on the comeback. I and a lot that. of people listen to them, especially like the younger final. fans. Um, but it, it's set up like it's a it's a mixtape. I mean, we we have there's all kinds of random shit between the songs. Did you have licensing and, issues? Some yeah, of uh, that's why Armin Sane is not on that. Yeah, oh. no, oh. <laughs> I just yeah, Faley would not. No, I just I'm joking. Um, no, you know everybody was really cool. You know we're fortunate enough that we we tour the world enough that we're friends with a lot of these bands. But what you have there is like there's a lot of other night demons in the world. There's there's younger bands Absolutely. that have a classic sound right. that are really going for it that are international bands. So what we wanted to do was put together like a metal masker or metal for mothers or something. And, sure. And kind of in 2015, say, put a stamp on it and say, here's what's going on right now in heavy metal. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is it also exposes a lot of other bands that's that, that you know, newer bands that are doing stuff that you might not have heard of. But mm -hmm. we do have some classic bands like Riot and Raven. Yeah, I know. Hyrax, Raven, Black Death Resurrected. Raven's you know, it's a lot of it's it's basically what's happening right now in underground heavy metal. And I, I and they're new tracks from those those bands, too, because those bands are still going much like Armored Saint. You know, there's Absolutely. a lot of of these bands that are doing that. Well, so dude, I think it's awesome you're doing yeah. that. Yeah. You're promoting you're not only your own band, but promoting the classic I mean, bands you from have the to. old school yeah. bands yeah. like yeah. Raven and yeah. Wyatt. Yeah. And, uh, you, you have know. to help the scene along in some way. If you're going to be a part of it like us and do this all year round and just put your whole life into it, you yeah. have to you have to rise together with that. It's amazing you know, that Riot, so going with their leader, of course, uh, Mark yeah, Reale, uh, passed, and yeah. Guy Speranza, one of the greatest singers oh, he was the in, greatest, in metal, yeah. passed, and Rhett Forrester passed. Rhett Forrester, like, yep. You know, so, but, you know, these bands are still trekking on just for the love of metal, and so people like it's you that are, great, you, know? you know, promoting the old school and the new school. Yeah. I think that's awesome. So heavymetalmixtape.com, you can pick that out. It comes out on the 31st, but we have a pre-order now that oh, includes, cool. uh, if you pre-order it, you get a poster and a button. I'm going to buy one because so. I love cassette tapes. I oh, still have yeah. like my Saxon tapes. I just realized something. You're like the minority in this room. Your last name's Weatherby, you said? No, it's Leatherby. Leatherby? Yeah. That's like such a You mean white because I'm, I'm white? Yeah, I'm a minority? Yeah, we're Brazilian, he's Latin, he's Armenian. You know, Armenian. after coming off the Mexico tour, like, I now know what it feels like <laughs> to walk out of a building and be racially profiled. When some, when we're some, profiling <laughs> you right when now. When a cop looks yes, at you are. and they're like, come over here for a second. Yes, yeah. we want to talk to you. All right, you. listen, I think we're about, we're about to end this segment. No! What? We didn't talk about Black Raven. Uh, we, we're going to talk about Black, how much time we have? No, this sucks, We're done? Man. Is it? Is it already? It's, it's actually, oh, it's actually over now? He's waving to us. Like, has oh. it been over? It's 3.51. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, uh, now we, we're going to have to start winding down. Okay. I want to talk at the end a little bit about Black Raven. Uh, at the end, just tell, tell us a little bit about the band and how people could uh, check you out. You, I know you got okay, some great Okay, yeah, we got a new out. record out, It's uh, or it's coming out. It's called Native Night. There it's um, uh, Daniel Hicks. Cool. Uh, is on on American Indian flute. Nice. My brother oh, Phil cool. Sandoval's cool. playing lead guitar, um, and uh, we have Chris O'Brien on keyboards and a whole a lot of special guests on there. Um, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, so so it's a it's a it's a really deep record. It, it's meant to to help heal the Great human stuff. condition. Uh, we look at it as like a drop of audio medicine, and we're about uh, to drop that like in that. in October. And it's supposed to splash on the earth and just, uh, uh, you know, just in, in, engulf it all, uh, the circumference of the earth. Uh, it's uh, about good vibes. It's about uh, reaching in and looking inward uh, and healing from the inside out and helping your human uh, uh, brothers and sisters. All That's right. it in a nutshell. The, the story is really deep. The making of it was uh, what had, had no monetary uh, no one gave us money. We did it with the help of other people, and that is the recipe to the new Black Raven Native cool. Night record. All right. So check Thank it out soon. Check them out on Facebook. Yep. And you can check out Night Demon. I know nightdemon.net or .com. Just Google, man. Just Google, Google Night, Night Demon. Demon. You can find all sorts <laughs> of stuff. 
Uh, you know, and you, I was going to talk about, you know, you're on Century Media right now. Yep. Um, so uh, definitely support this band and uh, check out the mixtape. Check out the Frost and Fire Festival. Please. If you're in the Ventura area. We're of gonna course, be going to be going there. Jasmine's, yeah, we'll, we'll, yes. we're going to head we out. I definitely out. plan on that. And Neely. Uh, yeah. He's still there. Sorry about that. This is yeah. just one so Sorry. quick. Neely, talk about just the classicmetalshow.com. They could check you out on Spreaker and all these other. Spreaker.com slash CMS Rocks, classicmetalshow.com. We're coming up on our 20th uh, anniversary in January. Cool. So 20 years of uh, classic right metal. And, of course, Bob, he's a frequent guest on the show. And uh, you guys and Gal, you're more than Thank welcome you. to be a part awesome. yes. <laughs> Thank well, you so much to Bob. Thank you Thank for having you guys. us. Sorry it ended so quick, yeah. but this is Inside how Metal. We'll do it. Go. Inside Metal. Support the Inside Metal. MetalRockFilms.com. Thanks, Jake. Thanks for keeping us going. Thanks, we will see Jake. you we next love week. You, Jake. Inside Metal Show, T Radio V. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio MTV.